right, let's go. So, uh, hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Agogi TV. This is episode 10 with me, your host, Phil Leonard. And I'm your host, Josh Summersgill. Today we've got Chris Kirkham, who is basically our barber, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't put this on you, Chris. I'm growing my hair all by myself. Um, but That's how long you've been in isolation, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Advertisement ever. Chris <laughs> um, is our barber and this is what he's responsible for. <laughs> I may as well have been bored. It'd have been a better advertisement, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, Should have me. About to do a five stretch haircut. <laughs> so it off. Straight off. Basically, we wanted to get Chris on because we we go we go and see him not only for his um, barber skills, which are top notch, but also um, because we have a good crack every time we go like on uh, go down there. Um, so um, we've got a couple of good points to talk over today. Um, and let's just see where we go with him. First things first, fucking Tiger King. <laughs> that bitch. How did they find, how did they find so many weird people? How how have they found that group of people <laughs> to do a program about? Like I've never been to a zoo where people have so many limbs missing. <laughs> like, they're doing something wrong. They're doing something wrong. People with arms and legs missing. If they're going to do tiger shows, there's a problem. There's a serious, serious problem there. At what point do you start walking around a zoo and go, everyone here is on meth? <laughs> like, this, well, they've got a massive dental issue, haven't they? That, like, looking around <laughs> at those people, there's very few teeth. Very, very few teeth. But I don't get how you can get two straight guys to be gay with you because you've got a tiger. I, maybe you should so, if anyone's not seen it then Chris explain what Tiger King actually is for anyone that's not seen it hang on hang on sorry before we go into that for anyone who's not seen it just spoilers everywhere yeah, yeah. You know, with yeah. turn this off now and go yeah. watch it that's oh. what you need to do that's exactly what you need to do correct now, I, it's, Tiger King is a guy who's got a private zoo uh, I think it's in Florida and he's got a shitload of tigers. I think he's about 111 tigers or something like that on his property. Mm -hmm. And he's also got the ligers as well. Yeah. Have you seen those where they're like some yeah. weird captive hybrid species? Yeah. He's got like a few of them which are crazy. It's like a thousand pounds, some of them. Like massive, massive creatures. So, uh, so he's got some of them. But yeah, it all sounds good until you like look a little bit deeper into Joe Exotic and how like psychotic he is. Um, it's it's really good watch to be fair. It's it's interesting. It's 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 I, compelling. You're watching it, watching him unhinge slowly, slowly. It's, <laughs> it's 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 a good watch. It's a good watch. It's a full on train wreck, isn't it? You're literally watching it, and you're going, oh, yeah. you're like, I can't believe what I'm watching. I don't even want to watch it, but you can't turn it off. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it? And then you get to, it's just so compelling, isn't it? And then you you watch a bit of it and think. This can't get any weirder, and then it does. Then <laughs> Every you know, episode is weird. Else can happen. Boom! Something else happens. And what about the I, other guy who was grooming the girls? What about him who's like grooming yeah, the girls? I, I like. And he had like three wives. Wow! Like, that happened. It goes to show how fucking mental Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin are when he's the normal one. With his yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, he seems like everyone. Everyone aspires to him. <laughs> Like, I don't want to be like that guy. He's a tiger wolf, yeah. And he just grooms loads of girls so they can come pet tigers and that. It's the weirdest. It is the weirdest documentary I've ever seen. And Netflix has done weird documentaries, haven't they? But, and I love tigers, mate. I love tigers and animals yeah. and all that. And you just think you're watching it thinking, oh, my God, these people looking after these creatures. It's just, it is mental, isn't it? It is. It's, it's another level. I watched the last five episodes last night. So I watched two like a week ago. And then obviously Phil mentioned that we're going to be having a crap with you about it. So I was like, right, I've got to finish it. And I fucking binged oh, it last night. And I finished and I was like, why is Carol Baskin still alive? Like, <laughs> for a start, what the fuck? And like... Yeah. Where's Carol Baskin's first husband? Where is he? He's Head to the fucking tigers. That's where he is. Here's my he's point. Got it, yeah. Right? Either he got fed to the tigers... Right, or he hated her that fucking much. He left his millions behind to get away from her. Either yeah. way, it's not a good I don't situation. Want to it. I don't know what I'd take out of that, mate. She <laughs> was batshit crazy, though. She yeah. was batshit, and you think like, 
there's only a certain amount of craziness everyone could put up with. And everyone knows that. You, you've got a certain amount of craziness you could put up with. Like, I mean, with every woman, there's a certain level of craziness. You pick your level of craziness and you can put up with that and then everything else is cool. But she's like off the Richter scale and he's like an older bloke got loads of money. Like, I don't understand where he was compelled to her. It's crazy, isn't it? It's a, it's a weird, weird one. Why, why was he singing to her? There was an episode and he was <laughs> like, what the fuck's going on here? What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 the whole thing was weird. When you're watching it and you're thinking, this can't be fucking real. This is weirder than like a made up story. It's I, like, I, you couldn't actually make this shit up. Have you seen the theory that, what's his name, the guy who comes and helps Joe out with his zoo and brings the fucking hitman? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, he, he's actually Carol Baskin's first husband before the one she got the millions off. Ah, right. Right. Oh, there's, there's shit. Pictures of them both, right? And they look exactly the same. Shit. Oh, like, my God. Just older. Like, and that's got to be the next episode that he turns out to be. He's like, she sent him in what? with a million. They've got a special coming on. They've got a special yeah. coming on. I think it's this week, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's going to come on. Yeah. Apparently, they made ah, it. I hope, that's, I hope that's true. I really do hope that's true. That would be the <laughs> best outcome. That really would be the best yeah. outcome. I love that. Like she sent a spy in with her millions, and to fuck it, like that, that, like I'd be like, right. I'd, to be fair, like at one point, I was feeling bad for wanting a dead, and kind of agreeing with Joe. <laughs> like I was like, I was sort of watching it going, should I, should I feel like I hate her that much that I agree with him? Uh, uh, see, I think what the problem was with Joe is that you can hate someone and dislike him and and do whatever you do, but he took it to that like next level. Like, he went above and beyond hate. It was like that blow-up door is, like, shooting her. And, like, it was just, like, it was next-level hate, wasn't it? It, was, it, it? it wasn't right. It was, like, it was pretty much Joe Exotic hate level up there, wasn't it? It was, yeah, it was crazy. It was a weird thing to watch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, though. I'd like to see either that be Carol Baskin's first husband or release Joe Exotic. And see what all this fame would do to him. Oh, wow. <laughs> nah. Could you, that? Could you imagine that? I bet he's sat in prison now with some little rent boy holding onto his pocket, buzzing, full of mess. Yeah. Like, but I bet he, when that tiger, when he found out a tiger got coronavirus, he went, fucking Carol Baskin. <laughs> I bet he, that's what he said. As soon as, he, as soon as that happened, I bet that's exactly what he did. I can't believe it. The thing is as well though, like obviously she's fucking from the start she's kicking off saying he's doing X, Y, and Z. And she's not like he's only doing what she's doing. Do you know what I mean? And like with the whole like oh not breeding cubs thing, this and the other, like there's not a lot of tigers left in the wild, is there? So and is it that is is his name Tim or the other zoo owners? Yeah, yeah, with the the monkey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He goes on about it, don't he? He says, like, well, if it's an endangered species, then like, obviously, how do you fix it? Well, you fucking breed more, more of the species, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it's, it's one of them, and it, yes, obviously, it's not great what they're doing and stuff, but, like, how would you get a species back up to population, do you know what I mean? Fucking breed them. That's the problem. Like, I, you sort of have a bit of a moral dilemma, don't you, going to zoos and yeah. stuff? Like, I love, obviously, I've got a little lad now, so it's like, it's Ace going to zoos. I love going look at animals and that. But I think soon, with like overpopulating hunting and stuff, I think zoos are going to be the only place you're going to see some of these animals anyway. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I think that's just the way it's going to go. So you may, you're going to have to come to terms with it, aren't you? I'd love to think oh, all the tigers are going to increase the population and all that type of stuff. But realistically, your zoo's probably going to be the place you're going to see them in the next, I don't know, 50 years or whatever. You'll probably only see them in zoos. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's not like you can release them back into the wild and stuff, is it? And I mean, like, and it's not like they're like pandas where they just won't fuck. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you yeah. can sort of like give them some quality of life. I'm sure. Like I, I'm not yeah, saying that, they that, they that much with any quality of life, but you know what I mean. Like yeah, they fuck that much. They create like different species. Do you know what I mean? Like lions and tigers, they just don't give a fuck. They, <laughs> they're not bothered. They just get yeah, a grapple onto anything. <laughs> have, have, have you read about ligers? <laughs> no, <laughs> mate. Right, so. Basically, when they breed a lion and a tiger, right, it because like they get a liger, obviously, 
and most of them have this fucking genetic disorder that stops them from that doesn't stop them from growing so that's why they're massive i have read this i have read this it's a lioness has the gene to stop the growth so a, a lion uh that carries the gene that allows it to grow to a, a full-size male lion but it needs a lioness to mate with so it stops it from like the growth hormone being released too much but a tiger doesn't have that that's why these ligers are like a thousand pounds because like when they're breeding like a male tiger with a female um sorry a male lion with a female tiger they're just growing like to a ridiculous rate because they've not got that sort of facility or whatever it is to stop the growth it's crazy you can't breed a liger with a liger because they're infertile. All right. Yeah. But like they're just they're just not made to be. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like like so what something like that. This is too fucked up and just stops it. But I don't know whether would they actually be good at like hunting or anything like that because they're so heavy. Because <laughs> they look terrible, don't they? They don't look equipped to to hunt at all. The fat and big massive heads. They put me terrible. <laughs> It's what? Like big gas doing CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to big gas. I know, where is it? I, I tell you what, I bet he's still booking on those six AMs and not fucking showing up. <laughs> hey, at the minute, I'm reading Goggins' book, that uh, yeah. cat. It's a fucking brilliant book. But it's almost like, obviously, as long as it's safe, but do things that you don't want to do it's that mental callous thing isn't it it's like i don't want to train because i've got a bad ankle i've got whatever we'll train around it make sure you're doing fucking something don't don't just not do anything at all because that's gonna be a lot worse for you than going training it's like this it's everyone being in lockdown at the minute oh no i'm just gonna sit and watch netflix the whole time it's like i hate running me i absolutely hate running shit so I've been making sure i'm running like five miles every day just just yeah. doing it after training so i'm training like twice a day the weight, uh, weighted session, like doing a hard one and then going for a run because I'm like, I don't really want to fucking go. So I'm going to go. Cause I'm reading this book and it's got me fired up. I'm like, do things you don't And I'll guarantee when I've finished that run, you feel minging, but I feel loads better that I've done it. You, you just pumped because you've done something you didn't want to do. So if I can encourage anybody, do that. If you don't want to do it, do it. And then when you've done it, you'll feel loads better. Where are you up to in the book? Uh, I'm just trying to think where he's so I've just got he's dropped out of buds so he dropped out when he got uh, medically discharged when he dropped out and now he's on like his build up like basically he's watched his documentary on uh, whatever it was and he's like I've seen real men and he's lost all his weight and he's on he's like about to pass out for it but he said he had it mentally prepared for passing out on stage he said so like I've put all the running in, I've done all that, I've done everything I didn't want to do. He said, but actually that moment where I could have just enjoyed it, he said he hadn't mentally prepared for just taking my, you know, he's, he's like dressed yeah. up, he said he hadn't mentally prepared for that, so he's talking about like mental preparation now, and it's, it's like, I've found it like really motivating, like, like listening to him. It, it is like, I, like I, I, listened, I listened to the book, I had the audio book instead, like, um, but there's a, they, like, there's a bit in the book where he first like runs a hundred mile race, and like, you just like when you get to that bit you're kind of listening to it going what the fuck it's, it's like tiger king i couldn't stop listening because it was just that like, right, that right, right. Blood. yeah he's pissing blood he's like he, he's got full rhabdo and he's like still running marathon still running like 100 miles and you're just like mate <laughs> like, made me read the book. I see, i've seen that on youtube i seen when he's talking about it and uh he's it he, doesn't he like shit himself and his uh yeah. missus has to get him in the back of the pickup and she's saying, like, we need to get you to hospital. And he's like, nah, I just want to feel the pain. I want to feel it for a bit and just know that I've done it. I'm like, he's on a different level, this guy. I was like, he's on a completely different level. But it's like, he's sort of like the other end where he's, he's so extreme with everything he does. I can't imagine Goggins ever sitting watching Netflix. Can't imagine him ever doing that. It's I like, he is so intense. He'd watch all of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's right. That, that is right. It would. It's everything in it. It's everything with him where he's like driven to that next level. And it, it, it's hard sometimes because I love motivational stuff and I'll sit and listen to it and, and get behind people. 
But sometimes the level they're on all the time, you think, when did they ever come down from that? Yeah. Like, what, like where, where did they, where did they go from there? It's, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? No, it's made, it's made like. I think I think it's like when you've been it's been in like special forces and stuff like that. Not, not that I know because I've never fucking been that good. But like, even like when you listen to top crossfitters, you listen to like anybody that's been at the top level of any sport, like they've just not got that off switch. It's just not there. No, do you know what I mean? No, like, and no, it's it is it is next level. And like you say, when they when they're willing to push themselves that hard. It's hard not to do it in every aspect of your life, isn't it? Because you, you've got that in you to, to do it. So then it just gets followed through into every little venture that you're going to do from that point then on in. It's just working out how that adapts to your business or lifestyle, relationships, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Um, right. Next thing I want to move on to. So at the minute, obviously, everybody is in lockdown. We're not allowed out of the house. So it's not probably becoming a problem yet it's only been a couple of weeks it's going to get to a point though if it carries on people are going to have to start either giving themselves haircuts <laughs> <laughs> or getting their other half to give them haircuts now you being our resident barber do you have any advice for people see <laughs> it's hard because, I mean, because people have asked like them number one like oh, Phil. Like Phil, he's styling it out in it. And what I would advise most people to do is just don't cut their own hair. Because if you start cutting your own hair, you're making more work for me. So when you come back in and it's a shit show and I'm trying to put it back together and you go, no, it didn't look quite like it used to. It's because you've cut it in between because you, with no experience, have cut your own hair. So unless you're going to go all off, I would definitely advise don't cut your own hair. Oh, try a few okay. different styles out on the way there. Like, try some other stuff or whatever. Uh, don't cut your own hair. Uh, Adam cut mine the other day, shaved it all off. And I have been having it a lot shorter, but it just went, uh, we're going to be in this lockdown for a bit, so we just shaved it all off. And I didn't realise how ugly a man I was until <laughs> all my hair came off. I was like, oh, my God. I walked in and I could see Steph's look on her face like I don't know if I fancy him anymore I could see that look where she goes oh my god what has he done luckily I'm still a great looking guy but I was on that borderline I was on that borderline so what if like what if this lockdown lasts for sort of like three to six months I mean for example you see my hair after like four weeks I mean yeah. so we're talking like yeah, Josh is just goes out no, yeah, out it's, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be really Jewish in your household, Josh. That's what it's going to be. That's <laughs> what it's going to be. Because I really was just thinking, right, I'm going to get Rach to, like, when it needs doing, buzz the sides all the way up to here, bit off the top, and then just try and blend it. But obviously, I have no idea how to cut hair. I feel like yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd advise against that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, in, my humble, in my humble opinion. I'd, uh, I'd give it as long as I possibly could. The thing is, you've had it mega long before. You've had it, like, stupidly long before. And if worse comes to worse, it's going to get back to that. Um, but I, honestly, I, well, nobody knows when this is going to get lifted. Uh, but I, it seems to be either everyone's shaving their hair off or they're keeping it on and growing it. Uh, even Adam, Adam's growing his hair. Like, he's, yeah. he's gone for it. Adam's the guy, yeah. The guy who if anybody doesn't know. But, yeah. He's growing all his hair, so it's like, I think you're in, decide what camp you're in, shave off or grow. I wouldn't be trying to do the I, same style as you normally have or anything like that. Just, uh, yeah, like what all the other. point today, like, my hair nearly covers my ears now. I feel like I'm like, I'm, I'm there and that's it. <laughs> like, cause it's like a Homer Simpson, like, until you let that middle bit out in it, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> What did if you like if you proper ruffle it up? What does it look like? Oh wow! <laughs> Emma just said from the other room, horrendous. She can go <laughs> fuck herself. <laughs> well, yeah, tricky, tricky that film. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you may as well grow it now because you ain't gonna shave that off. No, I mean, I mean, I, I was already fairly committed before before this all happened, and now I'm just like, well, now I've got a really good excuse. So, like, oh yeah, it's pushed you on, hasn't it? It's pushed you on that. So I'm just gonna just gonna yeah. roll it and then hopefully they come out the other end looking like fucking Aquaman. Thor. 
<laughs> just style it out. Just style it out. What's the worst that can happen? No one's going to see you anyway, apart from on this podcast. No yeah. one's going to see you. podcast that we're doing. I'm, I'm, ca- yeah. kind of hoping, I'm kind of hoping, though, that people just listen to it and don't actually look at me. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's right. I'm in the shower before it and slicking my hair back. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows. Brilliant. I'm at a Brilliant. Point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Get it, lad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right, have you, got, have you got the usual closeout questions? No, yeah, I'm, gonna I'm not going to lie. Um, right. For Chris, I, gen- I, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wing it and go for it. I might even go for more than one. Um, go on, then. Wing some questions at him. Okay. Num- uh, number one, film or... Yeah, tell you what, no, I want both of you. Uh, give me a film or TV series recommendation other than Tiger King. <laughs> other than Tiger King? Uh, see, I've been watching a couple at the minute. I'm juggling Netflix. I, I've got quite a few on the go at the minute. But I love um, Ozark. I'm in on that at the minute on the new series. Uh, Don't worry, you're watching it. I love it. Uh, I mean, I've been on my list. I think I watched the first episode a while ago. Is it, is it the second series now? Third. Third, third. series. Yeah, I watched the first episode a while ago and then it didn't carry it on, so I might have to get on to that. Do you know what, though? Do you know, do you know for me, I think if you're going to go favourite ever TV series, it's Sopranos all day. I don't know whether you both watch that, but I just love that, man. And an episode came on the other day and I, I sat and watched it and I've seen it all before. But it's just sick. TV, serious TV series, that. Yeah, I, 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 I need to get on to that because it's one that uh, people keep telling me to watch and I'm just not. Yeah. Um, right. Oh, book, book recommendation. Uh, it's mad because I'd probably say my favourite book is uh, The Power of Now, the Eckhart Tolle. That's a mega book. Have you two read that? I've not read that. I've, I've got it. It's in the other room because you told me to get it. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit of a heavy read, and it's a bit. Um, what's the right word? It can be a bit like spiritual, but it's not really about that. It's. Uh, I can go over it quick if you want. It's. It's basically. Yeah. Uh, you can't really cover it quick because it's, it's a pretty in-depth book, but it's basically trying to turn the internal monologue off a little bit. So, do you know, like, where we're all they're busy all the time and yeah. a lot of time you can sort of overthink shit and let your mind run wild and come up with all sorts of uh, theories and worries that you don't need. Um, and it's almost trying to turn that internal monologue, like, recognise it, see what's kicking in, because obviously everybody has a thought pattern, don't they? And, we can sort of be thinking about something or we can be sat just trying to enjoy something and your mind's going like, what about this? What about that? What about whatever? And it's trying to be a lot more present and the book pretty much guides you to trying to be more present in just everyday shit. And it's mad when you actually do it, you really like, you get so much more value out of things and it is, a, it is a really good worthwhile book. And even if you, you just adapt to a couple of those things and you, you use a little bit of it. It's, it's ace. It's definitely a worthwhile read, I think, anyway. What's that? It's The Power Now, and who's the author? Do you remember? It's Eckhart Tolle. Uh, I'm not sure where it's from. I think it's Swedish or something like that. I, I feel like that's the thing with most, like, I say self help is kind of books, like books like that, that are uh, aimed at, like, sort of the self help audience. Like, if you take one thing out of it that makes your life a little bit better, it's worth it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. You know, Absolutely. You have to adapt and do everything. It's like, it, like some people, the David Goggins book, I know people get really caught up in that, but if you just take one thing that, from it and go, right, I'm going to be a bit more serious about like actually getting some reps in and having being a bit yeah, more... That's it. It's, 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 adaptable. Yeah. it's adaptable, isn't it? It's adaptable to what you want to do because like it, every book you read, there'll be something in it that's applicable to you in your everyday life. It's like uh, Extreme Ownership. Josh told me about that, Jocko William book. That is a serious book, but like you've got to like the main thing I took away from that is like don't blame other people for for your fucking mishaps or whatever. Just take that ownership, and it, like I say, I've used that in in other other areas. Like you know, like just uh, everyday shit. Just we go, yeah, I'll do this better next time or whatever, and you just take ownership. But uh, there's some there's some mega books out there, and like I'm trying to use this time off to to read as many books as I can. That's another thing. I sort of like Audible. I like listening to stuff on, uh, like listening to it through Audible or going on YouTube, but I don't like reading. So I'm trying to encourage myself to read yeah. more, just to, to actually do that. So it's Goggins again. He just loves it. Love it. Uh, right. Um, one, you've got basically 
you got one day to sit down with one person and learn as much as you possibly can for them. It, they can be dead or alive. It can be anybody in the world. Who do you pick? Um, see, I, I think it'd probably be somebody like Steve Jobs or somebody like that. I know, I know he's dead, but I just how he worked in so many like industries and how he did what he did is amazing. And I want to, I'd love to find out how he just because he went from one thing to another to another to another, um, and he was always ahead of the curve of everything. And it seems like a real interesting, innovative guy. I know he nicked a few ideas and stuff, but like. He was seriously innovative, and you think like he would be an interesting guy to sit down with. I agree more like Elon Musk. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be. Elon too, I'd say. But yeah, I like it. Sick. Um, okay. Uh, and I tell you what, what would the name of your autobiography be? Fucking make him wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that would be it. Josh, you just wrote it, yeah. Fucking make him wait. Yeah. He's right. Yeah, that's, that's what I, I say like, all the time. I feel like it'd yeah. be like four pages long with just fucking make him wait. <laughs> that'd be it. That'd be it, yeah. Yeah. A picture of a fuck on the front. Yeah, that's what it'd be. <laughs> <laughs> He's right, yeah. Yeah, oh. top that. Yeah, I'll definitely have that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, Chris, that was it, mate. Thank you very much for coming on and spending an hour with us. Um, we'll definitely get you on again. I, I, I was thinking about making this like a regular section where we maybe do it like once a month or something like that. Even once we're out of lockdown, we'll, we'll catch up because you've always got some interesting points on things. And um like I say, it'd be, it'd be great to catch up regularly, even though I'm growing my hair dead long. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so we'll, hopefully we'll do, maybe we'll do like coffee with Chris or something like that, and we'll have like a, or uh, haircuts with Chris. I don't know. We'll, we'll think of something and we'll get, we'll, we'll make but it. Work up some shit. Yeah, we'll make, we'll make it happen just because I like it. If nobody even watches it, I find it fucking hilarious. So that's <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> uh, so guys uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us and don't forget to for people watching or listening to like subscribe comment view and share um, we don't do any paid for ads or anything like that so you guys sharing it is how we get the podcast out there to more people um, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Agogi TV uh, share on Instagram and Facebook leave a five star